be talking about the final story of the day, and this has come from none other than Mr. Calipari. Mr. Calipari, UK, University of Kentucky, head coach, said that he's excited about playing Gonzaga, but he's disappointed that they have to go there first, but making it happen, I was willing to do that. Playing in front of 13 thousand crazy fans in the Spokane arena will be exciting just like it will be in front of 22k fans in Rupp next year. John Calipari said I imagine there will be some uh, BBN and some uh, Gonzaga fans who will sneak in the game this year because there are more seats. Anybody who wants to play us in front of a 6,000 seat facility wants us to lose and I get that. I tried to look back and find the last time Kentucky played a true regular season home game with 6,000 or fewer fans. I stopped to look after the 70s. This is great for both schools, and I can't wait to get this series started. Maybe we should make this a four-year series. And here's what I'll have to say about this beef. Moving from one beef to the other, right? We just talked about the DeJounte Murray beef. We talked about the Paulo beef. We talked to, If you want to talk about super lame, let's look at Coach Calipari. I think that this is an unnecessary shot at the University of Gonzaga and who they are as a basketball program. The reason why I think that this is a bad look on Calipari's part is because there's no reason to even say anything about the Gonzaga Bulldogs arena. The fact that you would come out and, you know, wave your SEC kind of pom-poms and, and, you know, act like all high and mighty because you play in the mighty SEC where football reigns supreme there and football brings you in millions of dollars to just crap on not only the West West Coast Conference, but also just crap on teams that can't, that have 6,000 seats. There is no reason to do this, in my opinion. And let me just quickly do here, let's see here. Oh, I think this is Sean. This might be Sean posting in here. This is Sean. Calipari has been ducking true road games for a decade. He labels it home v. home series, but won't let Gonzaga play at home. He's scared of the environment. Duke only has 9K fans. And that's exactly right, Sean. I, I think that this is a really bad look on Calipari's part because I don't really think that he thinks that he's really, I don't know. I, I have never been impressed with the Calipari team besides that Kentucky team with Anthony Davis and John Wall. Other than that, they have never been, they've been overrated each and every year in the, in the, in the NCAA tournament. And, and it is frustrating because it's so, it acts like he is such an elite player, right? He acts like he's an elite coach with the way that he talks about and craps on teams that only have 6,000 fans. I I don't necessarily like that at all. I think that this is a pretty punk move on Calipari's part. And it's not even, and again, it's not even to defend Gonzaga fans because I think they can get a little rowdy as well or you know, a little crazy on the internet. Sorry, Son, it's just the truth on, on that part from my opinion. But the fact that you went to so low as to go the fan route of like, oh, they only have six, they only have six thousand fans. They don't really have that many people. That's childish. It's clownish. And, and the fact that you did that just makes it look like you you're scared. You're scared of playing in a small arena for whatever. I don't know why you would be scared to play in a small arena. Are you scared to lose because of your records? I mean, let's look at Kentucky's record these past couple years. Let me see here. Maybe they can. Here we go. I think this is a list of their seasons. And this is total, right? We look at the... So, obviously, they went with Tubby Smith for a little bit. They then went to Calipari. I mean, let's look at the year that they that they played probably the worst right here. Nine and sixteen. I'm sorry, man. You're just not you're not that coach anymore. You cannot be that coach anymore when you have a nine and sixteen record and then you go to twenty six and eight and you lose in the first round of sixty four. And there was no postseason held. You didn't even make the tournament the year before that. 
I'm sorry. Th this is this is just ridiculous. I understand that he's a great coach. You can see the winning and loss record. But it, it's just kind of, it is frustrating. And, and Sean, I'll read your comments since you're more of a fan and you know the story a little bit more. So you said here really quick. Um, He is saying that, oh, sorry. Oh, I already read that one. I'll, I'll just read them again. So Kyle Party has been ducking the road games for a decade. He labels it home be home series, but won't let Gonzaga play at home. He's scared of the environment. Duke only has 9K fans. He says it's hard to play in a small arena. He just wants his boosters and IL donors to be able to buy the tickets. Kyle Barre has trouble grasping that he no longer has the A side in these types of matchups. Uh, they haven't been relevant. He was so offended, few wouldn't budge on allowing Gonzaga to get the game at home first. And that's the thing. I mean, I, I feel like all these coaches are scared of playing against these guys. And, and I have no idea why. Because if they are... It, it, to me, it just doesn't make any sense why they would be scared. I mean, again, Gonzaga does need these games, in my opinion, in order to kind of prepare themselves for the NCAA tournament, prepare themselves to go against pretty much really athletic players. Because, again, I think that the WCC is a little bit weaker in that category of really playing to a standard that the Gonzaga Bulldogs need in order to overcome the hump of winning that championship. And so what I do find very interesting is that these teams that – quote unquote, are the best teams or have the best coach, quote unquote, of all time, you know, Calipari, Coach K, and many, I'm glad that Coach K decided to play against Gonzaga. Calipari wants to play against Gonzaga too, but wants to do it in his own way. And like you said, Sean, it's really about getting the NIL donors and getting people that donate to the players their fair, their, their cut of it and making sure that they don't get screwed over by not having a ticket to go to this game. Which is funny because I thought they reserved the front row for, for those ticket holders anyway. I, I just think that this to me is an excuse. I hate that the fact that sometimes that they have to play these games in weird places. Even though I was appreciative of watching the one in the Seattle arena um, at Climate, or I'm going to call it Key Arena. I'm never going to call it Climate Pledge. Climate Pledge. Um, and it's cool seeing them at Key Arena playing there. Um and even though I didn't go to the game, but it was a fun atmosphere, I could see that the crowd was really into it. And I can kind of understand it from that perspective. I understand Spokane is a little bit deeper than most. Uh, I dropped a tweet from a scene writer in the Athletic Charge Discord. Pull it up. All right, give me one second. I'll pull it up. Discord. Um. Oh, in the Charge Discord. Okay. Um. Let's see here. Okay, let's open this really quick. I think I have it here from Chris Viani. I think it's his name. Sorry if I butchered it. Um, Where was it? Oh, shoot. Did I just lose it? Dang it. My bad, Sean. I just lost it. Uh, let's see here. Hmm. And this dude likes to tweet a lot. Um, let's see here. I tweeted like a couple days ago. Um, oh, hang on. Let's kind of click it this way and it'll pop up. All right, here we go. So... I'll drop the tweet from C Okay, so I, I just, I'm pulling up the tweet right now. Here's the tweet. It says here, this is incredibly lame. UNC, Arizona, Michigan State have all played at Gonzaga on-site campus arena, but Kentucky won't. And, and that, to me, is the clownish part of this whole thing. I understand that Calipari is scared. I understand that he probably doesn't want to get a loss. But at the end of the day, this, to me, is what separates some coaches from others. Is what separates Tommy Treason or uh, Tommy Lloyd. I can't remember at Michigan State, so uh, Izzo. I don't remember who the head coach for UNC was at that time. I don't know if UNC, um, Roy Williams. All those guys have played at the Gonzaga Arena. And I understand it's a small arena. I understand it's a small campus. I understand it's Spokane. Nothing really going on over there. But. What makes the Gonzaga Bulldogs arena so special when you watch it on TV or even when you just watch it in person 
it is a more intimate setting for sports. And you cannot replicate that in the SEC. You cannot replicate that anywhere else because they've all decided to build these grand arenas where everyone is out spaced out far away from each other. There's no enclosed space. You can't really get the crowd can't really get into it like they can at Gonzaga. The kennel, I think, is what they call it, if I remember right, Sean. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think it's called the kennel because of their mascots of Bulldogs. So I just want to make sure everyone knows that. It's, it is a little pathetic on Calipari's part for him to kind of just be a scared chicken. A chicken. He, he, he's a coward. He's a coward for the fact that he doesn't want to be involved in such a great, what could be a great game. Right, because I think Kentucky actually brought in some pretty good recruits this offseason. And Gonzaga is kind of on this rebuild now that they've gone past Chet and they're looking for something else. The student section takes up an entire side of the arena and are three feet from the floor. If the players' ears, some people aren't built for it. Yeah, student section is the kennel. Oh, the student section is the kennel. So what's the actual arena called? And so that to me kind of goes to show you that that's why they don't want to go there. The fact that the 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 and again nba or nba uh ncaa high school all those arenas the reason why it, you can get some of the best games in the world is because the fans are there with their passion with their energy <laughs> it's the reason why i believe uh football european football is probably one of the best to do it because if you look at the way that european football is at times uh mccarthy athletic center okay got you the fact that you can have that passion, that energy that comes from the fans, I feel like bleeds into the players, whether you're on the opposing team or whether you're on the same team as the fans. Because I love it when a great player on the opposite team shushes the crowd or lets the crowd know that he is that guy. But what this tells me is that Calipari is an elitist. He likes, He thinks that he's better than everybody that has gone to the, the kennel before or gone to the McCarthy Center before. Athletic Center. He thinks he's better than UNC. He thinks he's better than Arizona. He thinks he's better than Michigan State. But let me tell you something, Calipari. You may have the history there in Kentucky because they've been such a successful uh, college team all these years. But what you won't have is the sauce of that intimate arena. That sauce that these other coaches put their money where their mouth is when it came to this team. And I just think that this is a situation. Again, he did, he, apparently Texas did this last year as well. He did it, this at Memphis too. I, I can't believe this. Mark Few will play any team, anywhere, anytime. Calipari is in the lead for sure. I'll post another tweet that show you how high, that, how high pothical he is. And I think it was that kind of, I think it was the, uh, if I'm not mistaken, Sean, it was the Damian Lillard tweet, if I'm not mistaken. So look at this. Texas is going to play Edinburgh to play Northern Arizona in a 2,500-person arena, which is UT, which is University of Texas RTV's home arena. Then Texas goes back to Austin to play UT and RGV in a Gregory gym, which is about 2,500 people. But they're not going to play... Oh, wait, no, hang on. He tweeted this one day after the Gonzaga. And this was, of course, the I believe this was the Damian Lillard tweet. I share this with our team today because this is exactly what we want our culture to be, including the kind, having a kind heart. Everything that Damian Lillard says he is to strive. We will not tolerate elitism or think you're better than others because you're at Kentucky. And like you said, this is so hypocritical of Calipari to do this. And again, I am not the biggest Gonzaga fan. But what I am not a fan of is Calipari waving his SEC pom-poms and nose at teams that he thinks he's better than. That he thinks, oh, Kentucky can simply cannot play in this small arena. And I just think it's absolutely absurd. I think it's absolutely absurd that this is the case, man. I think it's absolutely absurd that this, to me, is a situation where we're looking at it from an elite perspective when you literally just tweeted the year out that we will not tolerate elitism. 
And I think Calipari is also doing this, to be fair, Sean, he might be doing this just to get a rile out of fans and rile out of people to get them tweeting and talking about Kentucky basketball because they haven't been relevant in the last couple of years. <laughs> like I said, we looked at what happened here. The last time, they only won one championship since he got there in 2010. And again, we could talk about Mark Few and not winning it. That's fair too. But at the end of the day, didn't get very far in the 2013 season, 21 and 12. He had 29 and 11. Then he went 38 and 1, 27 and 9, 32 and 5. Then the year after in 2017, 18, 26 and 11. Then he went 30 and 7. Then he went 25 and 6, but no postseason held. That's fine. Then he went 9 and 16. The past year, and then this year he went twenty six and eight and lost in the first round, I believe. So I don't want to hear anything from Calipari about not being able to play in a big arena. We get it; your arena is huge, and you're probably one of the only arenas that has this. And at the end of the day, I'm sick of the hypocrisy from Calipari thinking that he is that guy when he's clearly not. And he's a good coach. I'm not going to deny that he is a good coach, but you can clearly see that he has a lot of bark, but no bite. And that to me is kind of a situation that I look at when it comes to Calipari. When, when I look at this stuff, you, you are running away from the challenge of fighting in the kennel. Or I should say not the kennel, the, the McCarthy athletic center. I keep wanting to just call it the whole thing, the kennel, which I think should be the nickname of the of the arena itself. But it is frustrating to see that a guy like Calipari is scared that much of a home crowd that gets into it like no other in the league or in the WCC or even the NCAA. I honestly like playing in the smaller arenas and the more intimate areas because of the way that this could be a potential game-changing situation for the Gonzaga Bulldogs. Again, their whole fortune changed when they got the number one player to go to Gonzaga. They also got Jalen Suggs, another top high prospect to go to Gonzaga. And they will continue this and become a new blue blood of the NCAA because of the fact that they go against these teams. They're not scared of the of the small of the big boys anymore. They go the they are not afraid of them to go to their place, and neither should the players go be afraid to go, or neither should the opponents be afraid to go there either. But it clearly shows you that they are scared to go there because they clearly, one, are greedy for money because they want their donors and people that pay the season tickets to get seating, which is fine. But they're also scared because they don't want to play in that small arena where the fans are right on them. They're afraid that they're going to lose in that game and they're going to storm the court. They're afraid of those moments because it could definitely dramatically drop their ranking in the NCAA basketball coaches rankings or preseason rankings or whatever it is. I'm excited for what we see here this coming off, this coming NCAA offseason and what we see going into the regular season because this is going to be a fun game to watch. And when the Gonzaga Bulldogs win this, I hope they clip that tweet and post it everywhere and let them know that he is that much of a scaredy cat to play at Mike or sorry is it Mike McCarthy or is it McCarthy Athletic Center he's clearly scared and he doesn't want that smoke uh let me know in the comment section down below what do you guys make of this story this should be a very interesting situation um uh, Let's see here, Sean, really quick before I get out of here. A bunch of comments are people bringing up that Gonzaga thing in the Dame tweet he sent out. Thing, let me see here. If there's a some more replies. Some more replies. More replies. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you can clearly see that. And again, 
Calipari knows what he's doing. We know that he's probably just trying to draw up attention for his team, trying to draw up, trying to get hype for the Kentucky Wildcats once again. But each and every year, the Kentucky Wildcats play for Calipari. They continue to disappoint because of their coaching decisions on and off the court. Let me know what you guys think of this situation and the story in the comment section down below. Calipari is a big chicken, and we all know that that's true. Anyway, guys, that's going to be the end of today's live stream. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. I believe it's 4 o'clock over there on the East Coast, 1 o'clock over here on the West Coast. So I'll be go getting some lunch really quick. Um, but again, let me know what you guys thought of each and every story that we had here today. Of course, we had the Kevin Durant, my way or the highway situation. We have the Paulo Blanquero and the DeJounte Murray beef. And of course, we also have this story with John Calipari being the biggest chicken in the NB or sorry in the NCAA history. Anyway, guys, like I said, my name is Bernie. Thank you once again for joining. And we'll catch everybody on the next live stream here on the charge with the latest NBA news and rumors and also basketball opinions and emphasis on the basketball opinions. <coughs> anyway, guys, like I said, my name is Bernie. We'll catch you guys in the next episode. Peace out, everybody.